Let's explore technology innovation by examining this all-American 5 radio, so named because it has five vacuum tubes. Actually, there's two radios in front of you. The first one is by Spartan. It was built in about 1937, whereas this is a Crosley set built sometime between 40 and 41. One of the things you'll notice is that this Spartan has tubes with connections on top. This particular tube has an octal base, but it does have a connection on top for the grid input. There are some similarities. Both sets have a speaker in the front. Both have an output transformer mounted on top of the speaker. But the biggest difference is that the older set has a mains transformer. So this transformer would have accepted the 117 volts. It would have converted it six volts for the filaments and then somewhere around 150 volts for the high voltage. This radio has no such transformer. Instead, the tube filaments add up to 117 and the high voltage is derived directly from the power line. There is considerable cost savings in that action because the transformer is a rather large and heavy piece. However, that made this set potentially more dangerous because it does not have the isolation that the older set does. I mentioned that both sets had five vacuum tubes. And if we take a moment and think about it, that's really an optimization process. We have a rectifier tube, a power output tube, a combined tube, where we have the detector and first audio amplifier. Then there is a intermediate frequency amplifier. And finally, we have the input tube, which serves double duty as both amplifier and oscillator. Same operation for this set as well. Rectifier, power amplifier, first audio amplifier and detector, intermediate frequency amplifier, and then this tube here is double duty again as both the oscillator and an amplifier. Thank you for celebrating this technology with me, where we see every year things get a little bit better. They get smaller, cheaper, less materials are used. In fact, if we could take all the radios from 1937 all the way to today and line them up, you would see a small progress every single year, with one exception. And that occurs sometime around 1955, when the transistor enters the scene, and we see a giant leap forward where the sets are much smaller and much more efficient.